This year, I bought my first Galaxy S devices for review. Of course, I picked up the S20 Ultra with its behemoth 6.9 inch display and its 100x space zoom. And I also got the cheaper, more modest, and arguably more compelling Samsung Galaxy S20. And after using it for about two weeks constantly, I'm here to share my experience with you. But before we continue here, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, as the YouTube algorithm likes that, and will help push my content to more people. First up, let's talk design, and I am definitely here for the more ergonomic theme Samsung is going for. Gone are the extreme edges that we found in the S6, and the S8, and the S9, and we now have this new flatter profile display, which I will touch on later. And also, the chassis has very nice rounded corners, which don't dig into your palm as much. We also got nice glossy glass in the back here that I have in this beautiful cloud blue color. And uh, the polished aluminum on the sides here makes for a premium feel and also a lighter overall build in comparison to the iPhone 11 Pro which features stainless steel. Oh, and after using the S20 Ultra alongside this phone, I have to say the camera module on here just looks so much cleaner and less obnoxious. Speaker quality is also great with this phone. We have really clear mids and highs, but the bass is a bit lacking in comparison to the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Pro. However, um, like I said, we just get more clear sound here and it's stereo as well, making it very full and really enjoyable when you're listening to music or consuming media without headphones in. And we'll do a little non-copyright sound test here just to give you an idea as to what I'm talking about. And I'll also quickly say that the haptics on this device are really great too. When you're typing, you just get a little bit of that, you know, haptic feedback or just physical input from the vibration motor, and it just feels really natural. And for the one person who always asks, phone call quality, even though you can barely see the earpiece here, is just fine. I've had no issue with it, and it sounds perfectly average and acceptable to me. Next up, let's talk display here. And I gotta say, the one on the S20, even though it's not as impressive as the one on the Ultra, uh, it's one of the best I've ever seen. This handset in particular has a 6.2 inch display size, and although it's a bit too small for my own liking, I do prefer the S20 Plus. Um, it's a very comfortable form factor that you can sort of one hand. The max res of this display is 3200 by 1440, which gives you a PPI of 565 on this display size, which just looks incredible. This might be the crispiest display I've ever seen in a smartphone in person and if you run this at FHD plus at this 2400 by 1080 a resolution you do get a PPI of 424 which still looks amazing. The bezels are out of the way they're very slim and trim and the hole punch just adds to this great look as well. This phone has a very futuristic and clean looking front side I have to say and as I previously mentioned I really do enjoy the fact that this phone doesn't have any insane curves on the side it just makes for a very comfortable and ergonomic experience when you're swiping through things and one of the big selling points of this display beyond the image quality which we'll discuss shortly is the high refresh rate that you can enable and although you do need to lower the resolution to enable this to FHD plus it's definitely worth it because 120 Hertz just makes the entire experience just so much more buttery and satisfying with one UI and yeah overall the image quality is just incredible with this display as well it's super bright you have insane contrast the color is awesome too and you can adjust that in settings if you like to your liking for example I have mine a bit more warm and of course you can switch to a natural profile if you don't really want the saturated color look and once again even though this display size is not quite my style I have very much enjoyed consuming media off this device with these really slim bezels off of YouTube and TikTok in my case Next up, let's talk battery life here. And as I always say, I'm not a scientist. I'm not keeping really clear records of my own screen on time. Um, but what I can tell you is this 4,000 milliamp hour capacity will get you through a whole day and possibly then some. Um, I've been reading through forums as to what actual people are getting with this device. And even with 120 Hertz enabled, I've been reading like, you know, at a minimum five to like seven hours of screen on time, possibly even more. And of course this varies person to person, depending on how you use your phone. Fast wireless charging is a great feature of this device, something that's not found in the modern iPhones. And also you have reverse wireless power share, which allows you to wirelessly charge your Galaxy Buds Plus, for example, without having a wall adapter or USB charger present. And sort of kind of obvious, oh my fucking God, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. She had to come and ruin everything. Oh, she did. 
And sorta kinda obviously, if you wanna get the best battery life or screen on time with this device, you're gonna wanna run this at 60 hertz and at FHD plus resolution. However, I do recommend getting the most out of this device if you pay a grand for it. So I'd say run it at 120 hertz. Just know that if you wanna have some substantial charge at the end of the day, you're gonna wanna juice up periodically here and there throughout the day. Next up, let's talk about camera performance. And although this is not the $1,400 Ultra, we have a very impressive camera setup this year. We have three sensors and lenses. We have a 12 megapixel wide, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a 64 megapixel telephoto capable of 30X zoom. The photos that I've taken so far have great contrast, sometimes a bit too much in some situations, and also um, sometimes the images look a bit over-processed, although in my opinion this is kind of typical of Samsung, but for the most part, um, the pictures that you can take with this device just pop and look excellent, and they have great color and sharpness, and overall clarity and dynamic range and exposure. And to quickly touch on telephoto capability, although it's not quite the same as the Ultra with its 100x space zoom, uh, it's close enough, especially for $400 dollars less and the 30x zoom works very very well not perfectly well but very well here if you want to get you know up close images from a distance video quality is also really great this year samsung is stepping up their game and i do believe the quality that you get here is better than that of the note 10 plus and it's very comparable to the iphone 11 pro and the iphone 11 which are great video cameras themselves the same great aspects of samsung image quality or pictures apply to video as well and the ois seems to work very well too and 8K, what can I say, just like with the Ultra, it blew me away. Although this feature isn't quite practical because of the file size, um, the sharpness and the overall quality is just incredible. This video right here looks like it was taken on some kind of cinema camera, and although it's not perfect, it still has some smartphone qualities to it. The level of detail is just breathtaking, and this feature just screams innovation and should be great if you wanna get a quick clip of some kind of majestic landscape or just atmosphere. And before I forget to mention, the 10 megapixel front-facing camera takes excellent quality selfies and front-facing video, although Samsung kind of has this smoothing effect that is kind of a negative aspect, but still, it doesn't really take away from the overall image quality that you're getting here. And night mode or long exposure mode with the camera here is excellent as well, although this image in particular is a bit over-processed in my opinion. However, the level of detail you're able to draw out of a scene like this, which is so poorly lit, is just very impressive and just shows Samsung's camera prowess. And last up, let's end things here with performance and software experience. Although the Snapdragon 865 is by no means the best SoC on the market right now, One UI has never been smoother, especially at the 120Hz refresh rate. It's just an overall very enjoyable experience, and though I've been wary of Samsung's flavor of Android in the past, all of that doubt and negativity is gone. I could definitely use this phone as a daily driver indefinitely with no issues at all. And yeah, it's just a really buttery experience. Animations rarely stutter, apps open very quickly, and you have a lot of RAM to work with, eight gigabytes to keep a lot of apps open in the background. Everyday tasks feel very snappy as well, very much similar to my iPhone 11 Pro Max, if not snappier because of course, Android is a bit less animation centric. So yeah, you're definitely getting what you're paying for in terms of UI responsiveness here. Face Unlock works very well as well. It's quick and accurate, although I don't think it's nearly as secure as something like Face ID. And also the fingerprint sensor, although it's conveniently placed and pretty accurate, um, sometimes it's very finicky and kind of annoying to use. Although for the most part, if you place your finger in the right place and apply a little bit of pressure, you should get into your phone with no issue. So to wrap things up here, this phone is solid. You get a very ergonomic premium build with great speakers and industry leading display with a high refresh rate, decent battery life, an incredible camera setup, and top-notch performance all around $1,000 if you get the baseline 128 gig model. And although the S20 is a bit small for my taste, I personally think I'm going to go for its slightly bigger brother, the S20 Plus, because I've enjoyed the experience with this phone so much. And that about wraps things up here. I hope this video was helpful. Once again, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this. Expect my S20 Ultra review coming sometime soon. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.